You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode about getting freedom from stuff. And what I'd like to talk about today is going paperless. I had some great feedback on the first episode that I did about freedom from stuff. So I thought I would do a bit more detail about some of the things that I'm doing. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about the process of going paperless, how I think it's making my life simpler and easier, providing me with more flexibility and loads of other benefits. I'm really enjoying going paperless. I'm about halfway through the project and um, I thought I'd talk to you about how it's going and what I've learned so far. So just as a quick background to paper in my life, I am one of those people who generates a huge amount of paper. This is one of the reasons why I was interested in going paperless in the first place. I love to read and I love to write and reading and writing are like for me are like an extension of my brain. If there's something in my head I want to get it down on paper and also if I'm interested in something I want to read about it. And so I have generated a huge amount of paper. For example, when I was at university years and years ago, I actually had a filing cabinet that I had to schlep around every time I moved from one student accommodation to another. I had to move this enormous bloody filing cabinet. And that was contained all my notes from things that I was studying, but also stuff that I was interested in and was just learning about, thinking about for myself. I got rid of that a while ago, but when I got into GTD, I got into having files for reference material. This is something that David Allen in his book, Getting Things Done, recommends. And he's really into filing stuff and keeping kind of orderly files of all the information that you need, all the kind of user manuals and, and uh, uh, receipts and things that you uh, generally collect. And I really got into that. So I had four boxes worth of, of filing material. And I've also generated a huge amount of index cards. I was using what's called the hipster PDA. If you can, you can look that up if you haven't heard of it. It's just a way of taking notes quite easily by carrying index cards around with you. I also had a huge shelf of books. I love reading and uh, accumulated masses of books. And what this all leads to is a huge amount of stuff. And as I was saying in uh, the first podcast I did about freedom from stuff, that stuff is stuff that has to go into storage when we go traveling and it has to come out of storage again. And it's also stuff that I have to find a place for and maintain. And that is a real limitation on flexibility, especially because we're planning to do a lot more traveling in future. So what I want is to have access to all of the um, things that I've written and stuff that I've and to still be reading, you know, great books and, and so forth. But I don't want the storage of all of this paper weighing on my mind. I want it all gone so that I am completely paperless and as flexible as possible. And that's what I'm about halfway through doing. Got rid of the vast majority of my paper books. Um, I've got rid of half of my paper files. And I'm right in the middle of a huge scanning project of just getting rid of all this paper. And I did also look at a, a number of good websites that are out there with tips on going paperless. And I'll put some links in the show notes as well. So here are some of the things, uh, tips and tricks that I've found online and things that have worked for me. The first is really just reducing the amount of paper that I'm accumulating. And this is, I mean, there are some really obvious things that you can do. Just ask for e-bills for everything that you can do. Almost all of the utilities and bank statements and stuff that I have come through e-bills except for a couple of stupid institutions that won't go to e-billing i don't know why um, but that just cuts out a lot of the paper initially that you accumulate and gets everything coming digital as far as possible uh, the other thing that i've done is to really switch to e-books wherever possible i'm really loath to buying paper books now i love reading uh, e-books on my kindle and as an added advantage you can also listen to them and so if you're uh, cooking or something, then you can have the uh, the book playing in the background as well, which is really handy. I also am a lot more cautious now about buying books. I used to see a book and read it 
contents and think, oh, that sounds awesome. That is exactly what I need to know. I really want to read that book. And I would buy the book in order not to forget that I wanted to read that book. And I would have it sitting on my shelf uh, as an unread book. And then, you know, life carries on. You have other things that you need to do. So that book would sit there and I wouldn't actually read it maybe for months, maybe never. And buying a book is a really expensive way of reminding myself that I want to read it. So I've stopped doing that and I just have wish lists instead. You can do this on places like Amazon. I have multiple wish lists for books and other um, things that I might buy uh, because I'm interested in them or I want them and so forth. And that is really helpful because firstly, it saves you money because a lot of the time your interests will move on, or my interests move on, and I end up not needing to read a book that I thought was going to change my life and be super important. So I actually save the money. I never bought it. Or at least, you know, in, in the very least, I get to defer the spending until I really am going to read the book so I can buy it and, uh, and not have spent the money long in advance, which is also good for cash flow. I also used to keep books on my shelf because... I love the ideas in them and because I, I want to remind myself of what it is that I learned in that book and also be able to get access to it again. And I realized that that is also a really expensive way of reminding yourself that you've read a book is to keep the actual physical book on your shelf. If you read a lot of books, you end up with a huge bookshelf full of books and it's much easier just to keep a reading journal and to write down all the books that you've read and then, you know, you can categorize them as well if you want to. And if you ever want to reread a book, you can just go and buy it again. Uh, so it's better for your cash flow too, because you can sell the books immediately after you've read them. Sell them on Amazon or eBay or something like that. And you have less stuff in your house to, to maintain. So that's the first thing that I've done is to reduce the amount of paper just that I accumulate um, coming through the door, if you like. But the, the main sort of heart of going paperless as a project for me is scanning all the paper that I have and shredding it. And this is what I'm currently doing at the moment. In order to do this, you really need a top loading multiple, multiple page scanner. Um, looking around on the forums and, and posts about going paperless, a lot of people recommend the Fujitsu ScanSnap and that's the one that I'm using. In case you're interested, I'm using an S1300i and it's a great little scanner very very fast really easy uh, so you need um, a top loading multiple page scanner and a flatbed scanner is just too slow uh, to make this a, a viable project and then the only other thing that you need um, is somewhere to put all of the paper that you scan into your digital system and and i use evernote and i also use encrypted folders and then the last thing that you need is a shredder if you have sensitive files that you're going to throw away, that's useful to have. You can obviously sell your scanner after you've scanned uh, the majority of the paper. If you don't accumulate a lot of paper afterwards, you can move to um, just using a small um, scanning app on your phone. There are many of those available. And I used one of those for seven months while traveling. And it was absolutely fine for things like receipts and stuff. If you're not accumulating a lot of paper, it's very easy to just scan stuff in um, using a little app on your phone. Or you can keep the scanner. They're not that expensive, and I think they're really worth it. But uh, just th that's something to bear in mind, that even if you do invest in this, you can always sell it afterwards. So what I'm doing is literally going through and just scanning all the paper from all of the files that I've got and all my old uh, writings and notes and so forth. Another thing that people sort of spend a lot of time writing about online in terms of going paperless is a question of how you should categorize and name your data. And I think actually uh, you could spend a lot more time on this than you need to, at least in my opinion, because with apps like Evernote, it's so easy to search and find documents that you really don't need to put a lot of tags and metadata and, and structure into the stuff that you're scanning. However, I will say that um, my system is really to try and have three bits of information uh, on, on the things that I'm scanning. The date of the document itself, you can adjust the date in Evernote so you can backdate things. The location, where you were or where this document relates to, because I think that's quite useful. And the people involved, the organizations involved. And I think those three bits of information 
if you have those either in the note title or in tags or in the uh, date field and location field, however you do it, if you can search on those three kinds of things, that using the 80-20 principle, that's like most of what you're probably ever going to need to to find. So I put everything into Evernote with uh, a basic title and, and just make sure that one way or another those bits of information are covered. And then with PDF files that I'm not st scanning into Evernote, but I'm rather putting in an encrypted uh, folder, I just put the date and the organization and what the document is in the title. And if you do the date in reverse format, so it's year, month, day, then it's easy to sort and you can have a folder for each organization uh, that you get letters from. So for example, if it's your bank statements, it's really straightforward and very easy to do. The last part of the system is just storing the information and retrieving it when you need it. And for that, um, the simple decision for me is, is just whether it's secure information or whether I'm happy for it to be insecure. Things like Evernote are insecure in the sense that the data is not encrypted and it is sitting on Evernote servers. And although I think they're a really good company, anyone who wanted to at Evernote could potentially look at your data. You have to bear that in mind and treat it as an insecure place to store. But as far as I'm concerned, for a huge amount of the kind of day-to-day -day information that I need to keep, I don't really care that it's insecure at all. I'll give you an example. Um, when I'm selling stuff on eBay, I have to keep those uh, sent receipts in case there's a dispute with the uh, the person who's buying it saying that they never received uh, the stuff that you post out. And I don't want that paper sitting around, so I just scan all of those uh, immediately and bin them, and then they're gone. And they're all sitting in Evernote, and... I forget about them then, unless anybody ever um, did query something on eBay, in which case I would obviously retrieve it. That's the kind of information that I really don't care that it's uh, potentially insecure. And so I put all of that kind of stuff into Evernote. But I do um, keep some documents secure, things like financial data and stuff like that, letters from the bank and so forth. And that um, I simply store in PDF files in an encrypted drive. Again, that's a very, very straightforward and easy thing to do straight from a, a scanner like the ScanSnap. So once this is finished, I won't have any more files of paper. I will have a minimal amount of paper books and everything else will be digital. I'm really looking forward to, to the project being finished, which it should be in a couple of weeks. So just to finish off, I thought I would tackle a couple of the um, questions and comments that I got back on Going Paperless uh, when I mentioned it in the previous podcast, Freedom From Stuff. And these were really interesting points and really valid points. Um, so I thought it's, it's um, worth talking about it. The first one was um, when you go paperless and you scan all your stuff, aren't you just creating a huge dump of digital stuff instead of having paper stuff? And in the same way, by doing so, you know, it's it, you haven't really got it off your mind. It's it, Maybe you don't have a big box full of uh, old papers in, in your cellar or your attic that you need to go through one day, but you just have a big file full of um, digital, but you just have a load of digital files that you need to go through someday. And I think that is a very interesting point and potentially a risk in going paperless is that you just convert the kind of paper that's surrounding you into digital form and then have it surrounding you on your hard disk. For me, the way around that is to make sure that everything I'm scanning doesn't have any action required except storage for potential future use. So if the document that I am scanning has something that I need to do, I need to respond to something, then I keep a note of that in one of my uh, projects in my GTD application and I'm not keeping the file as a reminder. The file is just being stored for long-term reference material if I need it. And in that way, it doesn't weigh on my mind having a whole load of uh, digital files in Evernote or in my correspondence in my encrypted drive because I don't need to do anything with that stuff. It's just there in case I need it in future. And it, it's a bit like when I use email... If you finish with an email and you archive it, let's say you have a, like a, a plane ticket or something, you archive that ticket and forget all about it. But just in case in the future you ever need to check, I don't know what the dates of a trip were or something, then you've got that, that flight um, record in your email archive. And it's the same for me with um, storing digital 
files that were previously on paper. I'm not expecting to do anything with them. They're just there in case I need them at some point in the future. The other interesting comment that I received uh, as feedback about this whole question of going paperless is rather than scanning all this stuff and making all digital files, it's much better to just keep the stuff that you need and throw away ruthlessly as much paper as possible because you, you don't really need uh, much of this stuff and you it, a better approach is to be more disciplined about just chucking stuff away. And there's definitely um, some truth in that that... Um, I'm finding as I scan stuff, there's a lot of stuff that I can just chuck away or, or shred immediately because I know that I can't imagine I'm ever going to need this or need to refer to it. So that's definitely true that um, a part of going paperless is just throwing stuff out and sort of stopping hoarding stuff. But And, you know, if you want to save yourself the time of scanning, you can certainly throw things away. But for me, part of the benefit of something like Evernote is that uh, you can just store stuff in there um, it doesn't take up any more space or cost you anything so why not do it so if you think you might need to refer to the stuff in the future why not so that's my uh, thoughts on going paperless i am finding it enormously beneficial i'm already finding that um, the more my uh, data is digital the easier it is to uh, cross-reference it and access it and use information that i've gathered especially when you have things like handwriting recognition in Evernote. So even things that um, were written down previously, you can you can get back some of your old notes if you search on specific words. And I haven't really encountered any significant downsides to this process at all. I mean, there there is, the, of course, the time that you have to invest um, uh, in scanning all the paper you've got, and you may need to buy a scanner if you don't have one. But in my opinion, it's really worth it. So I hope that is helpful. I'd love to hear your thoughts about getting more flexibility and freedom from not having any paper in your life. If you have any feedback about my experiences so far, I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.